getting us started. Uh, so welcome to the time to do other searches now. I am Kyle Lager. Um, I'm going to do my best here. There's quite a bit of actual demo at the end. I'm not going to get a laptop one handed, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, we're all on for right now. So first, let's thank our sponsors. Um, we've seen all their logos now, but um, the conference going to have one without them. So it's great that they're here. And great that they're supporting our conference and Drupal. Uh, I am Kyle Hedeker. I am an architect, the developer, developer, uh, recently turned full-time contractor. So if you see this presentation and think I need help with search, um, I will be able to help out and give you some tips for pointers or uh, how I'm building this little search for you. Um, Drupal out of work, my name is Control ATL. Uh, other places you can find me as Control ATL or Kyle Hedeker. Been doing Drupal, been doing Drupal as a full Past 10 years or so. Um, and that is actually where this module and this approach kind of came out of was building a client site and saying, hey, we could do this in Drupal. So, just some quick overviews about search. Um, a general search, ar search architecture the idea is that we are taking content from a site somewhere, a bunch of pages, and we are putting it into a search server somewhere, a search backend, and then we are serving that to the user. It sounds simple, but it is probably one of the most complex parts of your site if you don't have a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot of considerations, and there's a lot of complexity both in how you index things and then how you search them. And when you're doing Drupal, it gets really complicated. So this is a high-level overview of what happens when you're actually using Drupal and Search API. So on the top left here, we're starting with our content, right, pages somewhere. We store those in databases as nodes and various other pieces of content types. Um, and then we configure our search API server and index, and we take that content and we translate it into a search backend, whether it's solar, database, Elasticsearch, et cetera. And from there, we have our search index. But we then need to get results out to the user as well. So the, the first part of that part is really just indexing. Everything to the right of the, the Orange Search server is user experience and servicing index results to the user in a way that makes sense to them. And the Search API, you are, you're once again using it to actually perform the search. And pretty much no matter which index you're using, Search API is very eager um, or very biased or defaulted to loading content from the database. So even if you're using Solar or Elasticsearch, Search API is going to load entities directly from the database for its result set uh, to see the most up-to-date information. And there are configurations to bypass that and only use the index. But by default, Search API pulls stuff out of the database before it sends it to our view to display to the user. And that's really important to know for performance. So anytime you're building a search, you want to avoid databases as much as possible because databases are really, really slow. Your search index is a lot, lot faster than loading 20, 50, 100 entities from the database. And that's just for the results set, right? We still have to do facets and filters and all that. So there's two kind of parallel processes that happen when you actually perform a search with Search API. Um, we have database, and then Facets is its own process that kind of looks at the view result and the queries and services Facets to the user in its own block way uh, that isn't really tightly integrated as far as user experience goes into Search API. So we have database or Facets, and then ultimately most people end up building a view for your actual search page. And then you have to place that somewhere. So there's a lot going on with Drupal search, and it can be a lot simpler, which is why decoupling is great. So when you do a decoupled Drupal search, uh, on the left hasn't changed, right? How you index your content, where you're indexing content to hasn't changed, but instead of using Search API to serve up content to a view, we can serve it up directly as a JSON endpoint or just an endpoint in Drupal and then consume that on the front end of the JavaScript and display it to the user. So we can, so JPEG by default will still do the very eager loading of database settings, but you can disable those, and if you're looking for performance, you're probably going through that for making sure your search index 
is configured correctly for that. And then facets is kind of still a in parallel process, but we can include it in the same endpoint response and just have one single endpoint and give us all of our results, all of our facets, all of our filters, everything we need to know to render a, a search experience for the user. And it will, it's not only simpler, but faster. But if you're not doing decoupled search with Drupal at all, you can still cut out even more steps, right? So um, you have your content on your left. We put it into our Drupal database. If you're using a, service, a search provider that's not Drupal, you're going to index your Drupal site either by crawling it or feeding content directly to it from an API. And then that search provider will have their own search API endpoint that you hit. And once again, you just get a single endpoint with everything you need for search. And you serve it up to the user as the couple of JavaScript. So this is actually something that's fairly common and available with other search providers if you're not using Drupal. And it's pretty popular and works very well. We actually have some examples to look at later on. Um, so that's general search architecture. The other important thing to know is that if you have a simple site and you have search, there's a good chance that your search page is the most complex part of your site because there's a lot going on. And you can have a moderately complex site. If you have a moderately complex search, you still find the most complex page on your site. And when you start breaking down the search page, um, there's no specific reason I chose National Geographic. It's not a Drupal site. It's just a decent example of a search page uh, with some pretty pictures on it. So when you start breaking down the search page, there is a lot of individual elements. And they're all unique. And they all have their own functionality and user experience. And they all have to kind of work well together to have a good search experience for your user. So, we have our header search, right? So somewhere in the top of your site, you probably have a search icon or search box that the user can use as your search experience. We have our actual search results, whether they're cards or um, a list or a table or whatever. You have your summary, right? How many results do you have? What did you search for? And you have your results display. Like, this one didn't come from National Geographic. This one is from Craigslist. Um, but like, if you want to give the user the ability to change the format of the results, right? So Craigslist does like a map or a gallery or a list. That's another feature on the page. And then you have your sorts. Depending on what you're searching, there could be quite a few sorts and they could be quite complex. You could have prices, dates, um, relevance, alphabetical, et cetera. There could be various sorts going from various different fields. Uh, you have your pager, if you have a pager at all. So a show more is pretty common, just the infinite number of results. But if you have a pager, you have to figure out when do we need that next or last buttons, or previous or first, um, and how many pages do we want to see? Do we really want to be showing nine links at the bottom of our search? So there's a lot of just considerations for every individual element on the page that you have to think of when you're building search. And it gets really complex because all these elements interact with each other and start influencing what the page looks like, and they all need to work together. And then, of course, when you're actually on the search page, you end up having a, a search bar somewhere so that the user can change or clear their search. You need to figure out what happens when there's no results. Do you just show up link page? Do you show a nice little message? Do you send them somewhere else? Do you provide recommendations on what to do with no results? And then you have your filters and facets, which is the sidebar that is extremely complex. Uh, so filters come in check boxes, drop downs, range sliders, date pickers, pretty much any any format you can think of. There's a filter and or facet for it. So that was just a quick breakdown of like all the different elements that can end up on a search page and how each one of them really needs to be considered in isolation and together for the whole experience to work correctly. And a quick little side note, the difference between a filter and a facet. Uh, this is something I've had to explain many, many times in many, many projects, so I, I thought it was worth a slide. Uh, filters are what I consider dumb options on the page. They always display all possible options. Um, it's possible to configure a set of filters to display no results. And the options and the filters don't change based on the result, the search results on the page. This is what's really easy with views, right? So when you go in and you add a filter in views, you're, you're adding a filter. Facets are more common and more often used on search and what I consider the smart options um, because facets only display options that are relevant to the search results in the current state. So 
So you can't configure facets um, normally. If, you, if you're doing a normal narrowing only facet configuration, you can't configure facets to display no results because you'll never have an option in your facets that has no result tied to it. Um, if you have more complex interactions with hands and awards with facets, you can't get to that point. But generally with, with the normal facets that are Anything that's showing as a facet option is going to have at least one result tied to it. And this isn't something that's possible with views at all, which is why there's the search API facet module that gets used everywhere. So just as you're building search and thinking about search, just make sure you identify if you're building filters or facets, because there's quite a significant implementation difference between the two. Uh, all right, so what makes a search decoupled? Generally, we've touched on a couple of the points. Instead of loading HTML, we're going to be loading JSON so that we can render on the front end of JavaScript. We have some type of library that consumes that JSON and turns it into the actual search experience. There is going to be client-side state management of the query. So we'll still end up updating the URL, but we're not going, but we're also going to be managing a state so that all the components and elements that we just reviewed know what the state of the search is and can react appropriately to when things change. Um, and most importantly, for modern search experience, you don't want the page to reload pretty much ever, right? When somebody does something in your search experience, you want it to just update and be seamless and not do a full page refresh. Uh, so why do you couple your search? Because you're managing a single endpoint instead of many independent HTML templates. So with your default Drupal search API, you end up managing a lot of different templates, especially for your facets of how things render. And they're all separated out in your theme, and they're all mixed together and kind of interdependent on each other, but they're not <coughs> built in a way that's easy to comprehend. They're just kind of spread out everywhere throughout your code base. So having a single endpoint to manage that returns everything relevant to a search, and then consuming that JavaScript is a lot simpler and a lot easier to grasp because all of your information is in the same place. Uh, why do you call it research? Users expect a smooth, fast experience without page loads. So, I don't know how many of you guys have tried to use Ajax with Search API, but that issue is currently several hundred comments long, and the Search API creators and containers um, have said they shouldn't have merged Ajax. So, by default, with Search API, you're not going to be able to get a search experience that, that does not reload the page and work. You can get Ajax to work, but it's a lot of effort, um, and it's hopefully a pain that I never have to go through again. So when you decouple your search, it's a lot easier to have this smooth, fast experience that only changes the parts of the page that actually change. It doesn't like jump around or fully refresh or white screen the page for a second. Uh, why do you decouple your search? Uh, so it's just an interaction happy experience with client side state. So as we said, every element is interactable and there's like 10 elements at least in your search experience and they're all kind of managed in your own state and all that state can impact the other elements on the page. So when you decouple, when you're using the JavaScript library, it becomes a lot easier to manage that state and make sure everything stays aligned and make sure that everything refreshes. In theory, it should be a lot harder to have an element on the page go out of sync with the rest of the page. Like, say your summary doesn't display the correct number of results or something, right? That should be a lot harder when you're using uh, a client-side state management system. And then why do you couple your search? Performance. Uh, so, with Drupal Search API, and even when you're using Ajax, you're going back to the server to render everything. And Drupal's render engine is fairly slow nowadays. Uh, it's great at caching, but you can't cache a lot of search because this is kind of very deep. It's based on the, the query, the filters, the facets, when the content is updated, et cetera. So, when you're using a decoupled endpoint, you're pulling content directly out of the index, which means that your performance is generally faster because you're going basically index format to JSON to client to browser render. And that cuts out the entirety of the Drupal rendering system for your research. Uh, so that is decoupled. If you're looking at decoupling your search, it's worth noting that there are other search providers with product besides Drupal and Search API. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but it is ones that I have experience, experience implementing. Uh, and if you are really, really serious about getting your search right, it is probably worth looking at 
using another service provider outside of just what is provided by Drupal and your hosting solution. Uh, so Coveo is probably one of the more expensive options on the market. It's definitely an enterprise solution, and they offer things that Drupal doesn't have right now. Like AI is hot and new, so all of the service providers are adding AI integration into their offerings. Um, they can also do things like personalization, and they provide an interface that's really easy to tune the search and understand what's going on, which you can definitely do a search API, but it's definitely more of a dark art than uh, here's kind of what's going on, and here's how you change it, and here's how you boost things. Uh, and when you're using a provider that's not Drupal, you're not bootstrapping Drupal at all for your search results, which means you're getting a really fast response. Because uh, even when we're decoupling with Drupal, which we'll look at later, you're still bootstrapping Drupal to get your JSON API response. Whereas these other providers like Mobeo and SearchStack Mongolia just have an API that's specific to certain performance and search, responding to search queries. And they also provide JavaScript component libraries out of the box. So a lot of the elements that we just looked at um, on the search page, they provide a, a widget or a library or a React component or whatever so that you can consume their search API and just start building a, a search page really quickly. Uh, in the middle, from my experience, it's like search stacks and now uh, Um They also offer various levels of AI integration, personalization, et cetera, and the benefits of being API first. Uh, that a bit more of a, a budget friendly um, cost in my, my experience. And then we have Drupal. Uh, Drupal search can, for the most part, for most sites, serve the needs of what you need. But like, if there are some downsides. Drupal does a lot. It is not just search. So when you bootstrap Drupal, it is slower than an API and when it's built specifically for search. And while it's capable, it is not particularly friendly, especially compared to products that are built specifically for search and search tuning. Um, and out of the box, without the, the smart tool that I've written, we won't have to use integration and that as well performance thing. And um, just a complexity thing as far as getting, getting the page layout that you want. But on the upside, most, do, most Drupal host providers provide a solar server kind of by default, but can they not, cannot be do. Um, so it's generally just available. So if you don't have a lot of complex search needs or big search effects, you can get away with just using a Drupal search uh, API. Uh, some examples of this. So once again, this is no, by no means an exhaustive list, but these are sites that I know of that are running um, these various providers, and we can kind of take a look at them. So UVA is using Kaveo, and if we refresh the page here, uh, you can see that it's pretty pretty fast, you know, this, this conference Wi-Fi, and you get that experience that you look where you click, and the, the, the results refresh, but you're not getting a full page reload, and with Kaveo, they like to do this top tab implementation thing to separate out uh, Search results, you certainly don't have to, but it's very common for Kaveo implementations to do this. And you can see it's nice and speedy, just a, a search experience that you would expect and be comfortable using. Uh, Dana Farber is using Search Stack Studio with a custom JavaScript front end for the, for the API. And you can see it's also really fast, um, almost instant at this point. And we just click. Is pretty much an instant search. So those are two examples of decoupled Drupal or Drupal sites with decoupled search that is not being provided by a search API directly. And then looking into other Drupal examples, um, this is Fingate. This is more of your normal Drupal experience. You can see it's just chugging here as we're applying facets. Um, so definitely a lot slower, and we are getting some page shift as we're changing our results. So not exactly a super user-friendly experience. Now Foods is also a Drupal site using more or less stock uh, Drupal. They've managed to get Ajax working. So we don't get the page refresh, but apparently we do get something broken. Yeah, so we don't get the page refresh, but it's still kind of slow. And if you play with these facets enough, you will eventually actually break. Uh, the search results or the search experience to some extent that might not be obvious, but it will be broken and not displaying the right things just because of how Ajax is working with search API right now. Uh, Mecklenburg County is a very, very simple search experience. It's got one or two facets and just a list of content, but once again, it's a Drupal 
group implementation. So this one has Ajax and Search API, um, and we can see a little bit of page shift once again as we're, we're doing stuff, which isn't great, but it is a little bit faster than other two Drupal searches we've seen. And then we have University of Michigan. Uh, this one is, I believe, decoupled through federated search built by Palantir. And you can see it is, it's nice and quick. And the page shift we're getting here on the left is obviously a design decision and not an intentional, I guess. And then Milk Institute. So this one actually just launched yesterday, so I don't have a slide on it. But this is the first example I know of, of search web components um, in production. And it's a really interesting example because it's a conference schedule. So this page has 300 results on it, and they're grouped into days, and this conference has four days on it. And there's subnesting within the results as well. So like in a time slot, you can find an example here, there could be multiple things going on, and all three of these are their own results. So this was a really complex implementation that I helped uh, Sandstorm Design do for Milken, and I don't honestly know how, how I would have done this with use, right? So this is using web components, a decoupled search API endpoint that we'll look at shortly, and it is really nice. So like we have three new results here, and I click here, and nearly instantly we're able to filter these down, and there's no page shift. It's really fast, et cetera. Uh, it's overall just a good experience. Like, sometimes when I was building this, the only way I could tell things were changing but was by looking at the session on up here because like, the rest of the page didn't necessarily change, like, very easy to update. Like, the top results here on the right don't change. Uh, so those are examples. You can find, find all the links in the presentation. You want to kind of click around with yourself. All right. So, in the sake of time, we're going to skip this slide. Um, what I have done is, being really noted at using building the search API experience, I have built a module called Search Web Components. And the, the goal of the module is to make building modern search experiences in Drupal for, let's say, 90% of use cases really, really easy and just like out of the box configurable. Um, and then also be easy to be accessible for use cases that are not those nine percent. So Milton Institute, which you just looked at, with the example of you know, something not covered by the 90% because they have that really complex three session result that has grouping and sub nesting items and the fact that for all of it. Um, so that, that just launched and it's worked out really well. So I would say the model has probably obtained this goal. Um, there might be some features to your left to add because everybody has kind of their own search needs. But in general, it has enough that you can probably build a search page that you're happy with right now. Um, and what, how it does this is that it uses a search API endpoint built by OneX Internet and the module search API decoupled. Um, all rendering is done on the client side with a little asterisk because in order to get the results, we need to actually index a rendered view mode. Uh, by default, because that's the easiest way to render a result in Drupal. Um, we have full support for facets. We make one request to update all the components. The components are built on top of lit, which is a web component library. Um, we're using lit context, which we check by state. And then in order to support the extensibility of it, we bundle all the JavaScript as a single file that you can just include somewhere, or we release the the source file is essentially so that you can extend it and write your own components or change the components a little bit and get the, the experience that you need. And that's all done through NPM. Uh, we're going to see that slide again. Uh, all right, so search API versus web components. So I've set up a little demo here. And on the left, there we go. On the left here, we have a search API experience um, built on top of Umami. And on the right, we have a search web components experience built also on the same site, um, just using search web components. So they're both using the same search index. Um, they're both indexed the same content, obviously. But this is kind of what's possible just out of the box without really doing anything. And they look pretty similar until you start looking a little bit closer and start 
trying to customize things because, yes, we have our passes on the left, but because we're using search data, we're going to get that whole page refresh and we're going to figure out how passes work. Um, and then, particularly the tricky part with views and search API is the page layout of things that are form elements. So, stuff like this items per page and this sort are not easily configurable and not necessarily easy to move around the page along with the summary. So, this is using a views header um, element in the view, which makes us tie to the top of the results page. But on the right here, we have our summary on the top left in a different column. And that's really, really hard to do. Um, I'm not saying it's possible, I've definitely built and move things around with views and search API, but it's not easy and it just takes time that it shouldn't take. And then for the results, they look pretty much the same. So, let's see, yeah. And then when we're doing stuff with search web components, we're not getting that full page refresh and we can, just the stuff that is updating is moving around. When we go into layout here, we can kind of see the, the difference of the number of items that are available. Uh, so, on the left here, let's see, let's enable the content preview. So, on the left, most of our facets are their own block, and then, let's see, actually, let's see what the content preview. And then, we only, really only have three blocks on the right, so we have the exposed form block, the sort by block, and then the search results block. Whereas with search web components, we get a block for each part of the up, each page, for each element on the page. So we can put them anywhere we want, right? So we have a search input, apply passes, results per page, or results, no results message, and a simple pager, and we can drag these anywhere we want. Once again, a pager is an example that is built into the view itself. So if you want to put it somewhere that's not directly below the results, you have to go in there and really start moving stuff around. But with search web components, I can just drag that right up here, maybe. Um, I'm just put it on the sidebar. And then we can save this. And there we go, it is now in a sidebar, detached from the results. Uh, so search web components is really about just exposing each individual element on the page as its own block that can be placed anywhere and just continue to function as expected. Uh, and then it really is decoupled so another example I have set up here is I've taken the page you're just looking at and copied HTML and I've kept that a lot of the markup so we can get some of this out. But it's all just web components, so it's just like custom HTML elements in here. And if I open this up in Firefox, this is not a Drupal site. This is not any particular way, it's literally just an HTML file and we have a fully functional search in here. So, particularly what this means for, for government users where you're probably managing multiple web properties, if you're able to get your content into a singular index, you're able to put the search experience on any site or any page where you can put HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Right, so you can have the same search experience across all your properties and be using the same, same Drupal index. Uh, and then if you want to get it styled, See if these are still working. I uh, hit left. The seat says in here. Endpoints, and we need to create a new endpoint, and we'll call this 
And then we're going to use our search API index, so I already have the content on the configure. That is one that's running all the demos you've seen already. And then we have various settings that are available for the endpoint that are kind of like global settings. So we have our, our index. Um, we have the, the fields that will be searched when we run a query. I'm just going to leave them all selected for now. Uh, we can exclude fields from the response, so if you want to cut down the response um, and optimize it because you don't want everything in the index returned in the endpoint, you can do that here. And then you can configure the default page limit. So right now it's 10 per page, but you can add more options as well. So we can put 5, 10, let's go 2, 5, 10, 25. You can set the default sort order. Uh, so this one is set to relevance. I refer field and sort order. Um, you have a, a parse mode, correct query, single phrase, multiple words, etc. And then some custom stuff for search web components. So here we have the sorts that are available. Uh, so we have our relevance point by default, but I happen to know that there's an index field named title in the index, so we can go to title as a name, and then that'll be like A to Z, right? So that's uh, the index name, the order, and then the label that'll be displayed to the user. And same for page size, it's a little bit funky because this comes from the decoupled one. And this comes from search web components, but we can do the same thing here. Uh, yeah, that'll be good enough. Uh, and then our displays. So this is the if we want a list or a grid or a map, etc. And we can put grid in here, but it won't do anything because it's not going to have any or, like CSS associated to it. Uh, and then we have a result field. So this determines how results are rendered, and we'll see what it looks like by default and then come back and update this later. So we're gonna save that. We're gonna go to content, and we'll add a new basic page. All this down. And then we'll go to layout. Um, you don't have to use layout builder, but the model does provide blocks to place in layout builder. Like we saw, we can use literally just HTML and a Twig template if you want, um, but using the help builder gives that ability to kind of do it any way you want um, from the from the front end instead of being a developer, a developer. So we'll add a layout block and we'll change this. Once again, the search component macro exposes a couple of different layouts because all the elements do need to be wrapped in this special search root element. So this search, search layout provides that by default. Uh, we'll put the two common one in place. And then we choose our endpoint. So we just made the demo one. And here you can kind of configure some more defaults for this specific search. So you can add additional search parameters that are added to every search to the endpoint. So these won't be exposed to the user, but you can add them to kind of start limiting down what is displayed. Um, so like if you're doing like a tag search page, right, where you want to display all the content specific to a tag, you can do something with tokens here to make sure to add in like the, the token ID or the term ID for that tag and filter the content down automatically without that being removable by the user. Uh, there's a couple of other settings like the default result display, so we're going to use this. And then we're going to update the page URL with parameters and search. So in some situations where you have multiple searches on the page, you might not want to update the URL when people are changing things on search. So this gives you the ability to control whether or not the URL is updated. And then there's a special um, dialog for mobile to do the popover filter thing on mobile instead of having sidebars. And there's a box for um, the setting for that, but we won't get into that. And then we have just normal column column with four settings. All right, so we have our search group now. We will add, let's just add the search results, and then we can start doing customizations. So this is, the search components are all ones exposed by search web components. And we'll do results. And we'll drag that over here somewhere. And let's see on that. Thank you. 
Yeah, so the question is, since the page is content, how do you handle deploying that? And the answer is, you typically just manage it as content, right? You don't have to deploy it. Um, yeah, like, you may be restricted to specific admin content users, but if you want to make a change to your search experience, there's no reason to have to deploy that change. You can just have to do it right production. And another question? Yes? Uh, no, so this demo is purely Drupal. And actually the demo that you saw is also released as a Drupal module, um, the Mavi search web components. So you can literally just go install it on d or somewhere and have it up and running an example of the module so. Any other questions? Yep.